Here is our robot news for April 2022 with the following topics. We have the market figures of the use of mobile robots from 2021. We talk about two robots in extraordinary settings. One collects space debris and one located in a shipwrecked in Antarctica. And you learn why Robot Dog Spot is now patrolling the excavation site of Pompeii. Enjoy! Hello, my name is Werner Hampel. If you like our monthly news, give the videos a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to activate the bell to get notified when we upload new videos. And now we get started to our first topic. Autonomous mobile robots or AMR in short are currently one of the biggest trends in the robotics. And the numbers prove this. The market for mobile robots has grown significantly in 2021. According to figures from the British market research company Interact Analysis, around 100,000 AMR and automated guided vehicles, AGV, worth 3 billion US dollars, have been shipped worldwide in 2021. This represents a 70% year-on-year increase in numbers and a 36% increase in sales. Around 82,000 AMRs and 18,000 AGVs were shipped worldwide in 2021. Market researchers expect a large increase by 2025. They estimate that around 640,000 AMRs and 43,000 AGVs will then go to companies. Currently, the US and China are the largest markets, with 40% of the global mobile robot shipment going to China and 25% to the US. Mobile robots will become more widely used, especially in countries where labor costs are high, unemployment is low, and e-commerce is widespread. AMRs are flexible, cost-efficient, and scalable, and can therefore be used in a wide range of industries. However, most AMR are being used in logistics. I think mobile robots are going to become a big part of our future and it's already quite clear from these numbers. What do you think about this? Let me know your opinion below in the comments here. Space debris is a problem we typically don't notice much. Chunk accumulates around the Earth, broken satellites for example, which might collide with other functionally uh, satellites, expert fears the so-called Kessler syndrome, which means that the debris hits other parts in the, and comes uh, to a huge debris field. Currently, there are around 900,000 chunk objects in the low Earth orbit. That's why space institutes around the world are working on solutions for this problem. The German Aerospace Center DLR, together with partners on the ISS, has launched the Sumble Dog Roam project. In this project, they are working on technologies to render space debris harmless. No, not by laser, but this can be done, for example, by capturing debris objects and letting them burn in the Earth's atmosphere or by repairing the satellites. In both cases, a safe approach with a piece of debris uh, or a broken satellite must, must first succeed, and that is a major challenge in zero gravity. DLR has developed Estropy Honey with this purpose. It knows how to capture the Estropy Bumble, another free-flying object. To do this, Honey must understand Bumble's uh, trajectory and then positioned itself to avoid a collision. Artificial intelligence helps the robot calculate everything correctly. The robot works independently without needing to be controlled by humans. The robots are currently still in practice phase and it's not yet known when they could actually be used in space. This is a very interesting project which shows that robots can be used where it's too difficult for us humans. 
from the outer space to the deep of Antarctica. In 1914, Ernest Shackleton started an expedition to Antarctica with the ship Endurance. Despite an reinforced hull, the Endurance got stuck offshore and was slowly crushed by drifting ice. The crew members were all rescued, but the ship has been lost until now. More than 100 years later, scientists have now developed a state-of-the-art robot to find the wreck. Sabertooth, as the robot is called, uses sonar beams for orientation and mapping. It dove more than 3,000 meters deep and was actually able to locate the wreck. The leader of the expedition, which was organized by the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust, uh, calls the mission a historic and technical success because the Endurance was one of the most difficult shipwrecks to locate. That was due to constant bad weather and thick unpredictable ice, so icebreakers have previously been unsuccessful. Sabertooth is a hybrid robot that can move autonomously to the Antarctic seafloor, but is also connected to the ship by a thin fiber optic ribbon, allowing, allowing researchers to take control if necessary. The approximate position of the ship was known thanks to the records kept by the captain of the Endurance but he was using methods from the early 20th century, which are, of course, were not as precise as today's GPS. Therefore, the excitement was all greater when the wreck was actually found. The expedition leader, who has been working in this field for decades and has seen hundreds of wrecks, also emphasizes that the wreck of endurance is absolutely unique, that it's still almost perfectly preserved as it has sunk only yesterday. A great mission. We have talked about underwater robots on the robotics channel before, and it's once again proven that robots are well suited for diving missions. The excavation site of Pompeii is now being monitored by Robotstock Spot. The ruins of the Italian city, which is a popular tourist destination, are now being patrolled by Boston Dynamics Spot at night and all times when the ruins are closed. One of Spot's main tasks is to investigate tunnels excavated by illegal tomb raiders that are in danger of collapsing or are difficult to access. Spot is very agile, allowing it to inspect even narrow tunnels or cavities, recording data and photos thanks to cameras and sensors, and then transmitting them to the park staff. In addition to Spot, a Leica BLK to fly is also used. This is the first flying laser scanner that can autonomously perform 3D scans. The goal of the deployment is to optimize the monitoring of the current situation. It is also intended to gain more knowledge about the process of the work in the areas being restored and of course above all to ensure the safety of the workers. I think we will soon see similar projects in many tourist spots. Speaking of Boston Dynamics, the stretch logistic robot, which we, are, uh, we have already reported on, is now for sale. The company is taking reservations, but the robots will not be delivered until 2023 or 2024. All the robots that are to be produced in 2022 have already been sold, including to DHL, GAP and H&M. So the companies with which pilot tests are carried out. Then, starting next year, all other companies will be able to purchase the robot. That was our robot news from April 2022. If you liked the videos, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you want to be informed about new robot videos here in Robotics Channel, don't forget to activate the bell and we see you in the next video. Werner.